It's 336 BCE. Philip of Macedon had just been assassinated, and his son, Alexander III, was now king, and controlled the League of Corinth, the union of Greek city-states. United at last, Greece and Macedon now had the opportunity, and the strength, to invade the largest empire the world had ever seen. But time wasn't good to the Persians. We last left the Achaemenid Empire at the end of the Greco-Persian Wars, over a century earlier, in the early 400s BCE. The tolerant and advanced empire of Cyrus was no more. Xerxes couldn't accept his defeat to the Greek forces, especially for his brash decisions at Salamis, a battle which could have been avoided entirely. To be oh so close to victory, but fail in such a catastrophic manner, can surely leave you mad. Herodotus tells us of how Xerxes used women to take his mind off, which seems corroborated by the biblical, yet most likely historical book of Esther. Becoming more morally corrupt, he would live a life of luxury, being pampered by his servants, and satisfied by his harem. As emperor, Xerxes forgot the basic actions needed to even keep his close friends on his side, and his royal court would eventually turn on him. In 465 BCE, he was murdered by Artabanus, one of his most trusted bodyguards. The crown was to go to Xerxes' eldest son, but he and his younger brother were also murdered, most likely by the third son, Artaxerxes, who now became the empire's fifth king. Just five years into his reign, there was a revolt in Egypt, led by Inaris, with help from Athens. With the help of his satraps, or governors, Artaxerxes crushed the rebellion by 454 BCE, and Inaris was taken to Susa, and reportedly crucified. This Persian king was also the one to offer Themistocles refuge, after the famous general was ostracized from Athens. Artaxerxes ruled the empire until 424 BCE. After the reign of three very brief or unassuming kings, Artaxerxes II took power around 404 BCE. Soon after he became king, a new challenger to the throne arose. It was his brother and satrap of Lydia and Ionia, Cyrus the Younger. Cyrus claimed the throne as Artaxerxes was older, but had been born before their father had become king, while he himself was born after their father's kingship. While Artaxerxes viewed this as simply another rebellion, Cyrus wanted the throne, and knew the battle would be a difficult one. He had success in finding allies in West Asia, but the more he moved east, the more that were loyal to Artaxerxes. Cyrus ended up recruiting a group of mainly Greek mercenaries, called the Ten Thousand. They were an elite fighting unit, one of their leaders being Xenophon. He is the main source for this war between siblings. Cyrus' army met with Artaxerxes at Cunaxa, north of Babylon, on the banks of the Euphrates. The battle was hard fought on both sides, with neither getting a firm advantage. According to Xenophon, his force of 10,000 only lost one soldier in the fight. During a charge though, Cyrus attempted to rush through his brother's bodyguards, and was struck by a javelin, and killed. The battle itself ended in a draw, but Artaxerxes won the day, as his brother's army had no more leader, and nothing to fight for. Xenophon and his 10,000 then made the long march back to Greece, hounded by the Persians along the way. According to Plutarch, Mithridates, the man who killed Cyrus with his keen throwing, was arrested, as he took the glory from Artaxerxes himself. He was killed by scaphism, a torturous execution method, you definitely shouldn't look up. The rest of his reign was plagued by a series of revolts, which saw Egypt succeed in breaking away from the Persian Empire. The high point of his rule though, was playing both the Spartans and Athenians during the Peloponnesian War, and ultimately regaining control over the Greek city-states on the Anatolian coast. His son, Artaxerxes III, then took power in 358 BCE, and after a series of campaigns, reintegrated Egypt into the empire, after its 60 years of independence. Persia was on the upswing once again. But then more palace betrayal. After a 20-year rule, Artaxerxes was poisoned and murdered in 338 BCE, the same year Philip of Macedon had conquered Greece, at Chaeronea. 
His assassin was Bagoas, his vizier and trusted general, who helped reconquer Egypt. Because of Artaxerxes' early death, his son, Arses, or Artaxerxes IV, was still young, so Bagoas thought to control him once he took the throne. When Arses did the unexpected, and tried to kill Bagoas, Bagoas then had him poisoned as well, placing Darius III on the throne in 336 BCE, a rather obscure nephew of the Achaemenid dynasty. Older, and more experienced, Darius wasn't fooled by Bagoas and his puppeteering, and gave him a taste of his own medicine. Inviting the eunuch for wine, Darius had Bagoas poisoned. After decades of decline, Persia had a brief resurgence under Artaxerxes III, but Bagoas disrupted the empire's stability, making it weak once again. Could Darius make the Persian Empire strong once more? Alas, we aren't destined to find out. Just two years into his reign, an army crossed into Asia from the west. The army was filled with Macedonians and soldiers from the new Hellenic League. Their leader, a 22-year-old, ready to change history. Alexander had finally come. 